Hello, this is one of my automata, my beautiful hair. On this automaton, the eyes move, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I make the eyes and how I make them move. First of all, we need to make some eyes, and the easiest way to make those is to use an electric drill, uh, either on a piece of sandpaper or, better still, to use a band uh, sander. This is a small one-inch band sander, which is uh, really handy for this, because you can manoeuvre around it quite nicely. The problem is that they're quite uh, inconsistent sizes, so you have to make quite a few to make a matching pair. Uh, so I use uh, a lathe I converted to CNC, a small Sherline lathe, and this is uh, just the job for doing them. In here it just shows you uh, making an eye yeah, using a cutting bit that I made. It's uh, rounded at the end and it's three millimetres wide and uh, cuts out the eyes maybe a little slowly but quite nicely. But the main thing is each one's a consistent size. And here are the eye blanks uh, cut out and ready to uh, finish off. First of all, uh, what I do is uh, drill holes in to make the uh, control rod. These have to be drilled slightly off centre so that to allow for the uh, axle to go through the eye through the middle. I find the 1.2 millimeter brass wire is uh, very useful for various things. Here I'm using it to make the control rods for the eyes. Uh, we just need to finish the little burr off at the end and then uh, smooth it off with a little bit of uh, wire wool. The finished eyes then move along to be painted. First of all, I uh, start them with a base coat of uh, acrylic gesso. This uh, smooths out the grain and uh, makes them quite a lot harder as well and uh, enables you to get quite a nice smooth surface when you do the final painting. It's a bit of a messy job and it unfortunately really ruins the brushes because uh, it's really just plaster of Paris mixed with a, a, a acrylic uh, base. But here we are, they're uh, just been dried out. Now I leave them 24 hours to dry uh, so they're completely dry. It seems to take quite a long time to uh, dry through but now they need to be smoothed down something that I always find gives you a hand cramp after a while so I don't do too many at a go but using quite fine sandpaper there next some white acrylic paint just as a base coat quite important to get the right sort of white acrylic paint some of them are a little bit too thick and some of them are a little bit too thin that you can see through the white so uh, to experiment a bit with different brands to find the one that uh, works the best. I think this one is uh, Badger paint. Then the pupil, and this is where uh, having drilled the hole in the eye in the first place helps enormously uh, to get it uh, nice and central and round. Just a little bit of black acrylic paint. I made some plans and instructions for making automata. Down below you can find the link. Now on to painting the iris, which is uh, quite a tricky bit because you've got to try and get it regular all the way around. This is where having the brass axle fitted already helps because you can just rotate it slowly between your fingers. It's important to try not to get it to the right colour really and here it's going on a little bit too thick, making the eyes a bit too dark. Uh, so uh, that'll probably need correcting a little bit in a moment. So you have to hold your breath a bit while you're doing this uh, particular part and then just take a bit of paint off with the fingers and uh, lighten it up a little bit. Once that has dried I try and give the eyes just a little bit of character by painting some striations and coloration in. Um, Again, go around and then I tend to just smudge it a little bit here and do it a little bit darker brown, but some yellows or oranges uh, all help. And here's the finished eye with a couple of 
coats of varnish, uh, gloss acrylic varnish. Yeah. Looking quite nice. Now we just have to go about fitting it. Here I'm using a Proxon rotary tool with a burr in it and uh, you can also see just clipped to the table is a um, a bottle that a plastic bottle I converted into a uh, little dust extractor with a vacuum cleaner just to uh, suck the dust away. Uh, the uh, head I'd already made it just needs a little bit of finishing on the eyes internally to uh, fit the eyeball properly. Just do a test fit now. As you can see this one uh, looks like it's pretty well right there, which is good. So now we need to think about putting the eye into the socket. Here we're drilling a hole, a one millimeter hole through the eye using a former so that we can get it uh, exactly through where we want it to be. Otherwise you find it comes out at all sorts of directions. Just fettle it a little bit with the uh, long nose pliers just so that it's got the right angles on it so it'll fit in the eye socket. Now I'm just using a small carving tool just to make some grooves for those wires to fit in so that when we push it from the inside it'll slot nicely in and hold in place. Good. Nice free movement there. What I'll do eventually is just tack that with a little bit of glue to hold it in place. But so far looking good, so we just need to do the other eye now. Now I need to make the control rod that goes between the mechanism uh, underneath the lady through the body into the head. This is making the brass end that fits onto the cam. Just using the, the lathe and the brass rod and the, the file just to make it nice and round on the end. Again, uh, this is using the Proxon uh, 230 lathe, very uh, convenient piece of kit and that should fit onto the uh, two millimeter brass rod and I'll just tack it in place with a little bit of uh, super glue and that should hold quite nicely and then in a moment we'll file that off. Good and now we feed it through the rod that turns the lady's head a little bit fiddly because it keeps falling out but uh, we'll get there. Uh -huh. So you need a little bit of patience. Good, and that fits through there onto the cam follower and the lady sits up and uh, all fits in place. Now we can see that as the cam goes round and round that little control rod goes up and down so we just need now to make something to connect that to the rods coming out of the eyes. So we do that by bending a little bit of brass wire again. Uh, just a matter of getting the right shape here. Then, again, a fiddly little part, but we need to solder that onto piece of brass rod which has been drilled through and also has a small tapping screw set into it. So get it in place again, hold your breath, a lot of patience.
just clamp it down to hold it in place now. Get the uh, tap screw in the right place so we can actually get an Allen key in there to uh, attach it to the brass rod that comes through the head. And then we bring on the uh, solder and the soldering iron. Just takes a little bit of heating up that brass. We'll get that. Fiddly because it keeps moving around, but eventually, again, a lot of patience involved in all this. I'm sure, there's probably a better way of doing it, but uh, I get there in the end. So here's the brass connector all bent nicely, soldered onto the uh, attachment to the 2mm rod. Now we just have to get it onto the two control rods and then fit it over the 2mm rod going through the head, which uh, is again fiddly. There's a lot of fiddly work involved uh, at this stage. You can There you can see that the small set screw to hold it in place that allows us to adjust it so we can get the eyes going up and down at the right time those control rods bend a little bit to get it right because we've got to get both eyes going at the same time of course and a little uh, allen key just to put it in place for a test go now we just need to adjust it so that uh, it's going up and down the right amount. This is the advantage of uh, having the set screw there that we can uh, keep loosening it off to get it in the right place. Worst thing you can do is fix these things solid and then find it's wrong. As you see at the moment it's just lifting the head a little bit too much when it's at the top of the cam so we need to bring the, uh, the mechanism down just a little bit. Just bend things straight. And again with the Allen key just to uh, sort it out. All fixed in the right place now, so now I need to glue the eyes in place. I use a, a brass rod just to put a little drop of glue on the end rather than use the, uh, the actual tube of glue. It just makes it much more controllable and easier to reach in. And here we see the mechanism working. It's on the Geneva wheel, so it's sporadic movement. As you can see the uh, the eye control goes up and down inside the uh, control for the mouth and the head. So you've got three concentric controls there. In the moment we should see the eye moving at the other end. There we are. Marvellous, and the eye and the mouth moving as well. So, two eyes fitted and moving. Job done. Thank you for watching.